There's a fun spell you can do to encourage compassion and courage for everyone. And this comes from the source starhawk.org. Tonight on the 4th of July, light sparklers, as they burn, chant the following charm. By the crack in the Liberty Bell, false attractions now repel. As fireworks burst to stars so bright, all are drawn to truth's great light. Care for the earth for every child. Protect the water, love the wild. And from the mountains to the sea, raise the torch of liberty. Ring the bells and heed the call. Justice, justice, now for all. So mote it be. This comes from the source, Witches of the Craft. Did you know that in New England, on the night of July 3rd, towns competed to build towering pyramids assembled from barrels and casks. They were lit at nightfall to usher in the celebration. The highest were in Salem, Massachusetts, on Gallows Hill, the famous site of the execution of 13 women and six men for witchcraft in 1692 during the Salem Witch Trials. Composed of as many as 40 tiers of barrels, these are the tallest bonfires ever recorded. The custom flourished in the 19th and 20th centuries and is still practiced in some New England towns. From the source, AmericanFolklore.net. Axe Murder Hollow. Susan and Ned were driving through a wooded, empty section of highway. Lightning flashed and thunder roared. The sky went dark in the torrential downpour. We'd better stop, said Susan. Ned nodded his head in agreement. He stepped on the brake, and suddenly the car started to slide on the slick pavement. They plunged off the road and slid to a halt at the bottom of an incline. Pale and shaking, Ned quickly turned to check and see if Susan was all right. When she nodded, Ned relaxed and looked through the rain-soaked windows. I'm going to have to see how bad it is, he told Susan, and went out into the storm. A moment later, he jumped in beside her, soaking wet. The car's not badly damaged, but we're wheel deep in mud, he said. I'm going to have to go for help. Susan swallowed nervously. There would be no quick rescue here. He told her to turn off the headlights and lock the doors until he returned. Axe Murder Hollow. Although Ned hadn't said the name aloud, they both knew what he had been thinking when he told her to lock the car. This was the place where a man had taken an axe and hacked his wife to death in a jealous rage over an alleged affair. Supposedly, the axe-wielding spirit of the husband continued to haunt this section of the road. Outside the car, Susan heard a shriek, a loud thump, and a strange gurgling noise. But she couldn't see anything in the darkness. Frightened, she shrank down into her seat. She sat in silence for a while. Then she noticed another sound. Bump, bump, bump. It was a soft sound, like something being blown in the wind. Suddenly, the car was illuminated by a bright light. An official sounding voice told her to get out of the car. Ned must have found a police officer. Susan unlocked the door and stepped out of the car. As her eyes adjusted to the bright light, she saw it. Hanging by his feet from the tree next to the car was the dead body of Ned. His bloody throat had been cut so deeply that he was nearly decapitated. The wind swung his corpse back and forth so that it thumped against the tree. Bump. 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 Susan screamed and ran toward the voice and the light. As she drew close, she realized that the light was not coming from a flashlight. Standing there was the glowing figure of a man with a smile on his face and a large, solid, and most definitely real axe in his hands. 
She backed away from the figure until she bumped into the car. Playing around when my back was turned, the ghost scowled. You've been very naughty. The last thing she saw was the glint of the axe blade in the eerie, incandescent light.